You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. 
Sometimes writers feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Welcome to FUBAR, One Nation Under Foo, and I am your host, the lovely, the enchanting, the angelic, the tolerant of Foo. And we are coming to you live from FUBAR Studios here on KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. And here we are once again, folks, the first show of the fall season. It's kind of like, you know, when you're a kid and you wait all summer for the new shows to start in the fall. Like, this is the bunny show for the fall, and it's so exciting. Because we have some really cool things coming up tonight. Uh, We'll get that to you guys in just a second. But a couple things. First, um, thought we would talk a little bit about the guy I'm going to bring on. Because really, I mean, most of you know who he is. He's been on the show before. But the reason... The reason we decided to to add him as a permanent fixture is we just don't have enough chicks listening to the show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it is actually the Road Veer. Road Veer, are you there? No, 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 seriously. You just call Ted Cruz, tell him I'm the 157th most influential conservative on Twitter and, <laughs> and government needs to pass a law. Oh, oh, hi. Hey, how are you? You're the 157th most popular uh, conservative voice on Twitter, huh? I don't know, man. I just <laughs> hi. <laughs> well, uh, you know, probably I get ten millionth. What a million and twenty seventh or something? Yeah, that works. that works. But um, yeah. So what we're gonna do, guys, is um, you know, I could play and tell you that my mother made me bring my brother on the show. But honestly, the main reason, besides the fact that now the me. went through the roof and he's just a really fun fixture and it just makes makes sense to have someone on here to help me and to annoy me while I'm on the show and he was good enough to do it and not get paid so that worked out really well RB yes free labor you have any goals or are we good to start talking or is there something you want to talk about before I jump into my list uh no just I mean I I, I'm kind of lost after being spending the week in Twitmo, so I'm just going to have to uh, roll with the punches and nod sagely at things you say. So just make sure people know you're nodding and agreeing with me the entire time. That'll work really well. Um, sure. You know, you were in Twitmo, so you were locked. Your account was locked, correct? Yeah, apparently saying that Antifa and Nazis should be thrown from helicopters is frowned upon on Twitter. So, yeah, I've spent a week in Twitmo. You know, it's interesting that you got locked down for basically throwing a bunch of horrible people out of a helicopter, and and there are actually people out there impersonating individuals who did not get locked down. So um, I'm curious, you know, how many accounts now have you had to to redo? I've had my original one, and then each time I've had to make one to get evidence to get my original one unlocked, and that's been always been a month multi-month project and then finally twitter will say oh you know in hindsight now that we actually have a human looking at your case you weren't actually in violation of the tos but don't do it again (laughs) don't do it again yeah that's funny so that this current iteration is yes just trying just hopefully hopefully getting my original one back 
Yeah, that would be nice. But you know that you've had some really good ones coming back. You know, the Road Beer Reborn is probably what that's your most recent, right? Yeah, that's the one I'm using now. Right. And how long until you're going to be free to to join the masses again? I know that your your fan club, your harem, is in listening to the show, and I'm sure they're very anxious to find out when you'll be back. I should be back about an hour after the show. I'm counting on making the second half of Misfit Gift Challenge. Oh, and I love the Misfits. I'm so glad you brought them up. You know, I've had Mo on the show and JR on the show, and they're such cool people, and I love that they kind of take place on the same night that we do the show. It's almost like we're working together. I kind of dig that. Uh, So I'm glad you brought the Misfits, and I know the Misfits have also um, have to deal with a lot of crazy in in social media because, you know, there's a lot of crazy out there right now. There is a lot of crazy, and it's I, it's exhausting sometimes. But well, you're a magnet it, it, for it. You know. <laughs> I you am really a magnet are. for crazy. I mean, that's why I've got the harem. <laughs> I didn't say it. So if we get off the air and we're in trouble for you calling your harem crazy, I'm going to remind them that you said it. I just alluded to it. Um, but you know, <laughs> I I think what this comes from, and, and maybe this is just me being bitter and cynical at this point, is watching conservatives and the conservative movement kind of lose its mind in social media over the last two years or so. Well, yeah, I mean, when, when everything was, oh my God, we've got to stop Obama. Oh my God, Obama is the worst. Then we all kind of, you know, we were all, I hate to use the term because it's the term that the Trump supporters use. We're all fellow travelers. We were. You know, and, and during the election, we had a lot of that with the left to those of us who were resistant to Trump. And now it's all blowing apart. I mean, my whole feed today has been people calling other people racist and Nazis where they don't have a racist or Nazi bone in their body. But because somebody used a word that somebody else didn't like – Everything's hitting the fan, so it's I'm bad. watching. I'm watching my TL and just grinding my teeth, wanting to, yeah. you know. Well, but. you know, when you've got people saying, "If you stand for the national anthem now, you're a white supremacist," you know that it's just gotten really stupid. Because <laughs> I mean, most people stand for the national anthem, and most people are not white supremacists. Well, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I was thinking about that today when we were going over the top 10 list, and I was thinking back, and it goes back to, I don't know if you remember when the PC culture just started where you know, it wasn't compulsory to put your hand over your heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance to school. It became an optional thing, sure. and this is the generation that was raised with that is now taking it to the next level and saying, well, if you do it, you must be a racist because you're standing up for everything that you know ever happened in the United States, even though the national anthem, I, if I remember right, didn't actually become our national anthem until the 1930s. Yeah, it was so, long, yeah. So long after like, slavery was done, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not like this was the same song that the founding fathers and the Confederate soldiers and everything were singing right. prior to the Civil War. It, Are you sure Jefferson Davis wasn't singing about, you know, he was you know, he, he may have contracted Francis Scott Key, I don't you know. You know, it probably <laughs> happened. Uh, but it, it's crazy with the NFL and the kneeling and – you know, it, it, it's gotten ridiculous, and I, ha- I bring up the crazy on the right because I really think Trump dumped gasoline on the crazy on the left with this whole kneeling thing. But, I mean, some idiots were still doing it, but it was like, oh, look, the dummy is kneeling again, and you moved on. Now we have football players saying, well, I'm not going to be told what I can and can't do to protest by Trump, so screw him. I'm going to kneel anyway. None of them know what the hell they're protesting at this point. So what can the right figure out? Nothing. We don't know what we've done wrong. There's a guy, you know who Jonathan Chait is? I do not. Well, he's, you know, and I'm glad you don't because you're probably a better off for not knowing. Uh, he's some leftist journal moron, and he's written some books or something. He thinks he's really important, but he's not. Uh, today, he, he actually wrote a tweet and that said all conservatives are white supremacists all of anybody who's a conservative is a white supremacist and if you try to defend a white supremacist's right to speak you're a white supremacist that's exactly what was in my feed today with the former (laughs) i mean not that particular person but that was the same thing it was like you know somebody just tried to be an edgelord and say something controversial and so they're a racist for saying it even though this is their whole shtick is to just say controversial things to get a rise out of people right and so everybody who defended his freedom of speech to say it is a racist and a nazi and And that makes that's like the opposite 
of the Nazis, which makes me insane because the Nazis were doing what they're trying to do. The Nazis didn't want people to have the freedom to say certain groups of people were not supposed to say anything. They weren't even really considered human beings. So for him or anyone to say, if you are for free speech, you're a white supremacist, he's well, a freaking that, Nazi. That, and that, and that's what, that's how the left works, and, and that's it, it's a retort. It is like, like you said, it's the same thing. The Nazis, when you take personhood away from someone, when you when you put them in the box of well, they're a Nazi, so they or they're a racist. When you take that personhood away from them, you're able to do all sorts of unspeakable and heinous things to them. I mean, that's the whole mm-hmm. history of you know anti-Semitism and racism, and, you know, and everything else is that Maybe, it's all. Yeah. Well, once you take the identity away from that person, you can do whatever you want to. Well, they objectify and dehumanize in the pro-choice movement. You know, they make the baby inhuman or not a person. They take away their identity so that it's exactly. okay to kill they, they that. They take it from being a person to a tumor. To and a fetus or friggin' germ cells or whatever they want to call it. Anything to keep it from being a human being. And this mm-hmm. is what they're doing with the right now. So while, you know, and I know you're not a Trump fan either, um, which is why we're probably such good friends, but um, I have a real problem because I don't like what a lot of people who support Trump are saying, but I believe they have the right to say those things. And so I'm like, oh man, that was really stupid. Why did you say that? But I'm not going to tell them not to say that. And I, I think that puts conservatives in a really strange light. I'll never jump on it, and I'll never be one of those people who are like, no matter what Trump says, I'm going to find a way to say, yeah, this was the way you're supposed to do it. But I'm really getting sick and tired of people who hate him pretending that it's more than what it is. Making, making me defend him is making me insane. <laughs> yeah, and that, exactly. That, that's, I, I have the exact same frustration. So I, I'm not defending what Trump says. I am actually mocking your overreaction to it. Yeah, and yes. Now all of a sudden, you know, I'm the Nazi because, Nazi. yeah, I'm the Nazi that. because you're an idiot, and that's. <laughs> so. I'm a Nazi because you're stupid. Okay, that. And, and that's fine. the world we live in now. It is the world we live in now. It is the world on Twitter. You know, you have to remember that there is a world outside of Twitter, but it's such a part of what we do, and it's such a part of pol- politics anymore that you gotta talk about it and make fun of it. I tell you what, RB, we're gonna take a short break. Then when we get back, I'm going to have you go through the top 10 douchebags of the week with me, and we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll All right. be baptism by fire. Guys, stay put. We'll be right back. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. This is so bad, y'all. Thank you for staying. <laughs> it's not good having two people besides myself on with me during a break because then they make me laugh and we come back and sound unprofessional. Woohoo! Live radio. You are here you, on the you, food. You bar. risked that when you signed me up. This is a good point. You're on with Fu and RB. Hey, and we're going to have second. RB around every Just week from second. now on because Same. I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, and actually, you know, we like having his his harem there in the in the chat listening to the show. Hey, and Sam. Uh, a piece Sam. of meat, Sam. I th- You're not more than a piece of meat. Sorry. Rick, are you there? Yeah, I tried to cover for you. I actually started playing the intro about 15 seconds early so we could wrap before the mic went live. But thanks for outing yourself. <laughs> Dude, they know I screw up. That's why they listen. They want to hear me screw up. And we're going to screw up a lot because that's what we do here at FUBAR because we're such a professional show. Anyway, uh, guys, we were talking a little bit earlier 
about the craziness of Twitter and with the craziness of Twitter, there's always the top 10 douchebags of the week. Now, if you're a good listener and you listen every week, God bless you and thank you for being here. But if you don't and this is your first time, shame on you. You should have listened before. And here's how it works. What we do is we go out into social media and we ask you to nominate people who you think have acted like jerks or douchebags over the past week. Then we go through all your little nominations and we pick the ones that are the most entertaining so that we can mock them and talk smack about them on the show. Um, It kind of makes you part of the show and you do part of my prep work for me. So it works out really nicely. Actually, this week we had over 150 nominations. Thank you, people. I guess there are a lot of douchebags out there in the Twitter universe right now. But so we're going to get started and I'm going to have RB help me. I did send him the list and we'll go through that. And he has some comments here and there. So we'll see how this goes. But remember, I'm always right and he's wrong. Okay, at number 10, we have Valerie Plame or Valerie Plame Wilson, if you know her full name. Valerie is um, a CNN talking head. She was some sort of CIA operative for a long time. And apparently Valerie is a giant anti-Semite. Uh, yeah, big fun finding that out on social media. She posted some stories, uh, particularly one that blamed American Jews for all the wars. And this was really bad because it talked about Bill Crystal in particular and, and said some unflattering things about Jews in general. When she posted this, Twitter exploded, thankfully. And um, basically, Twitter lost its collective it. So um, she came out later, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read it right, my bad, oopsie, I should have read it more. But most of us know she's full of it because she's, this is not, not the first time she's been an anti-Semite on her timeline. Arby, did you see any of this craziness? I this came across the day after my suspension, and this was when, this is when suspensions are so hard because there was so much mock worthy in that. I mean, just with everything that she has built around herself, at just her whole success is being outed allegedly by the Bush administration as a CIA operative, and then she perpetually outs herself as an anti semite, and it was all pretty quiet until she RT'd, "Hey, there's good points in this." Basically, not Stormfront, Stormfront article. It was. <laughs> I thought so, it was Stormfront. It read like Stormfront. Yeah, Awful. When, when that happened, I was like, God, the week of all weeks to be suspended. Oh, but you know what's really fun is she also gave a bunch of money to Hillary Clinton in September last year. Yeah. 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 Good people, those Democrats. And Valerie Plame is a douchebag at number 10. At number nine is the New York Times, an itty idiot out there who thinks communism and socialism is awesome. Uh, They were really stupid at the New York Times and put out two op-eds this last week saying that communism helped Chinese girls dream and socialism, if you can get past the whole idea of socialism, isn't that bad. Wow. What is happening at the New York Times? I get that they're... Am I on my mind? No, 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 no. The, the takes on this were awesome. I mean, was, one of the columns was written by the same contributor who had written how sex was better under communism, uh, under <laughs> Soviet communism. And I guess if you're waiting in a bread line for food and you don't have a lot else to do, it can't that, be kind of hot if you're into the that, whole... That, that, mm, remember we okay. talked about no BBC. Well, okay, well, <laughs> U.S. Uh, anyway, go on. <laughs> okay. No, you're right, though. This is These are the same idiots that, for whatever reason, find that communism and socialism always make capitalism look bad. And I, I don't get it. Like, the Iowa Hochberg, he actually compared it to going to the nude beach, the socialism article. You know, both of them are crap once you go and you see what they yeah. really are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it, like that generated a lot of great hot takes from all over the Twitter sphere, and I, it, I, it, it kept me laughing. It really beyond did. the flaws. It was something like it makes communism may have its flaws, but so it was like Hitler had flaws, but he wore great boots, and Stalin yeah. had flaws, but he cut down on gridlock traffic. Yeah, you know, it was bad. And yeah, they're I, sure, 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 Auschwitz was bad, but the trains ran on time. Yeah, and the kids were skinny and kept in shape. Yeah, at number nine, New York Times, you are a douchebag. At number eight is James Martin, who nobody has ever really heard of again. He's a blue check who decided to say that Saudi Arabia allowing women to drive somehow was better than how America treats women. This didn't go very well for James, and he actually deleted the tweet after people kind of exploded at him and Reminded him how how rarely women in America are stoned for being raped, 
But um, yeah, he thought this was something that he should write about because apparently Saudi Arabia allowing women to drive was a big deal. What do you think? This, this one, this one missed my radar. I I didn't get to catch this one. I was probably out doing something. It was a real quick flash in the pan, but that's yeah. pretty douchey. That's pretty douchey. He got out. You know, people were nominating him, and I had no idea who he was. But he's famous now for being a douchebag, and he's at number eight. Number seven is Sheila Jackson Lee. Sheila Jackson Lee took a knee because she thought that was her way of solidarity with all of these NFL players. You know, if we were to steal a page from the Pat and Stu show that was on The Blaze, Sheila Jackson Lee could be in a douche hall of fame. <laughs> She's so bad. She's so bad at everything. She's a freed slave, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Sheila Jackson Lee. Yeah, but she took a knee. She decided to take a knee because she was, you know, resisting Trump and solidarity with the NFL or whatever the hell they're protesting now. Yeah, I don't even know what that means anymore. It's become meaningless. It's meaningless, and she's still a douchebag at number seven. At number six is Shannon Watts. Shannon Watts used Saudi Arabia giving women the right to drive and compared it to how horrible health care is in our country because men control it. That was her big stretch. Saudi Arabia giving women the the legally so they can drive, not a right, sorry, but it was illegal for them to drive, is somehow better than the health care that we have in America because men are controlling women's health. That was her whole take. As a member of the patriarchy, I feel outed, and we're going to have to do something about her. Can you please do something about her, Shannon Watts? <laughs> Oh my God, she's I, I can't see her. She's blocked me. She's blocked ninety percent of Twitter, of course. But um, I did see that someone sent me her her tweet about how you know she had all these you know evil white men who are controlling women's health care, and somehow they're worse than Saudi Arabians who are stoning women for being you know raped. But um, so she's a douchebag at number six. At number five is Jack from Twitter for granting certain people two hundred and eighty characters. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't know if that's just a test, but that seems like something that you would really want it to be all or nothing. I mean, there's already kind of bad feelings towards the blue check aristocracy, and to give them 280 <laughs> characters while the get 140, I it, it's not a good decision. But Sorry, I, you really, little I, people. I really look forward to the really the 150 tweet hot takes that are now going to be twice as long because of 280 characters. Oh All we wanted God. was an edit button, Jack. All we wanted, Jack. You know, and of course, Louise Mensch has 280 characters already, and everybody can oh, use more God. Louise Mensch on their timeline. Thanks for that, Jack, and you're a douchebag. If douche there's bag. anybody who ever took crazy hot matrix and just moved completely off into the crazy and eliminated all the hot it's that's, louise mensch that's louise mensch but she didn't make the top 10 this week but jack did at number five number four is hillary clinton and anybody and everyone for the puerto rico drama pretending trump isn't taking care of them because they're brown people in puerto rico no that's the new that's the new take on the left is that trump is deliberately letting puerto rico suffer because they're all brown people Mm, okay. Okay. But tef, if you look at the actual, if you look at Puerto Rico, eighty it's like eighty percent white. So I guess he's just really pissed off about that twenty percent of brown people. Well, because she couldn't exploit them like she could in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation. You know, I mean, she, you know, she's such an awful hyena. And as much as I don't like Trump, I'm so glad she's not president. Yeah. Well, yeah. I yeah. I yes. I will nod she, sagely. She is the forever douchebag, and she's at number four this week. At number three is the NFL, Mike Tomlin and Roger Goodell. Now, of course, everyone knows what the NFL did, and Roger kind of caved, and they're all kneeling, and Jerry Jones, and let's somehow make some big statement because Trump tried to tell us what to do, blah, blah, blah. Mike Tomlin tried to kind of avoid the drama. I gave him credit for this. Because I thought it was the only way to deal with this nonsense was keeping his team off the field. One player went on the field. So it became this huge drama. And in that player, I can't remember his name. You got it for me? I don't. God, I, I suck I, at names. You have I, to... I, I suck at show prep. Here's the thing. Well, I didn't prep anything. Here's the thing. If you're going to be here as a psychic, you've got to know names because I never do. I can't remember his <laughs> name. <laughs> but anyway, he came out. He stood. Then he came out again. He said, I'm sorry. I made my coach look bad. I made my team look bad. Blah, blah, blah. It's all stupid in the NFL. Mike Tomlin and Roger Goodell, they are douchebags at number three. I, I want to stop. I want to talk oh, about the Tomlin thing just for a second if we have thing. time. I know. Go it, ahead. Is that um, I, I don't think that he personally qualifies for it because what he tried to do 
is I, I kind of agree with it in that look, we're above the stupidity with this thing. I mean, I we're just gonna we're just gonna stay in the locker room. And if you look at the picture with the one guy who did step out, the whole rest of the team is in the aisle, whether they're standing or kneeling, doing their thing out of the public view. I think he was just unfortunate to be enough to be far enough forward to where he could get captured on camera. And True. I, and that, that's my take. I, I think that Tomlin had the right message saying, we're athletes, we're above this because there's no way to win this. I mean, yeah. You know, we're a business and we're doing, we're making a business decision. And that's where, that's where my take is on it. Well, I think your take is good. And I, I think, and I still think Tomlin did the right thing. I had a hard time putting Tomlin on the list, but so many people nominated him. I went ahead and did it because, you know, this is part of the show with, they get to say what they want to say, but I'll tell you with Tomlin, you know, I don't, I don't know that he told the player that he had to come out and apologize. A lot of people seem to think he did. Tomlin just, I think wanted to play ball. And he was I, tired of it, and he's like, "We're just gonna not even bother with it." I, I don't. I don't think that he told the player that he had to come out. I think Tomlin said, "Well, you know, look, I was shooting for a hundred percent," and then that kind of, I don't know, maybe passively guilted the player into saying, "Look, I coach I wanted a hundred percent, and I screwed up." And I really don't think it, he intended to either. I think he was just unfortunate enough to be in the sunlight while the rest of the team was in the shade. And I still don't, even if. Even if he said he did screw up, I don't think he screwed up. I love that he was there, and you know he is an uh, he's an war vet, he's an army ranger. So it was cool that he was there. It just became such a big disgusting mess because the whole thing is a disgusting mess because people have lost their damn minds because that's all they can do now. They well, lose their damn minds. And that I agree is that it's something like this that you know sports should be immune from has now been it has been thrust upon them. Absolutely, sports, entertainment, everything. We're just over it, and we got off topic, and I'm sorry, my bad. So <laughs> at number three, this is RB's fault, so he's a douchebag at number three. Imposters and means social media is, is number two on this week's top ten douchebags. Guys, there's, you know, there are dumb people on Twitter. There are trolls on Twitter. There are trolls in life, and they hide. And sometimes people nominated this person who impo- was my imposter yesterday. He's been road beers, imposter, whoever this poor little Nazi is, he's got something else going on in his head. But he was nominated by, I don't know, 70 people for (laughs) impersonating me yesterday. So I went ahead and put him on the list at number two because he really did suck and and get alive and move on. And if we pissed you off, you got to grow up. It's Twitter. Move on, blah, blah, blah. You know the shtick. And he's a douchebag at number two. Did you have anything you want to say? Because he's really your biggest fan. Well, yeah, he, he started out as one of my impersonators, and I, it's – I got nothing to say. I don't want to give him any more attention than Good he's point. already generated. I, I, I feel bad that he cons – and there's three of them impersonating me right now – that they con my followers into thinking that it's me because I'm so frequently suspended. They use that to jump in to mm-hmm. – you know, and then it, I, I don't want to say it makes me look bad, but then they'll block me so I can't say who's following them to warn them. So, oh, yeah, it's, it, that's yeah. Yeah, they I, blocked me and then tried to say things like, you know, the white race is the number one race and we need to build a wall because brown people are bad and things I would never say, like you should donate money to Planned Parenthood and dumb shit that I would never say. Right. So well, they create screenshotable moments to be used against you later because yeah. the, there's your screenshot with your name and everything. And so, yeah. Yeah. You have to prove you didn't say it and you didn't delete the tweet. So Yeah, yeah. So they're bigger than a douchebag. They're a dumb shit at number two. At number one is the West Point cadet. I think it's Spencer Rapone is his name. Did you see this guy? Yeah, I, I actually just saw it. Somebody sent me an article from SoftRep that he resigned from the Army Ranger School. Oh, did he resign? I hadn't seen that because I did write yeah. about the little brat who – was posting, you know, for solidarity veterans for Kaepernick, and he had his hat turned outside, and communism will win. He had a J shirt on, real stupid crap to pull at West Point. And you know, he's a kid, but God love him, he's number one this week on the top ten douchebag. Yeah, he, you know, reading about him, he did serve in Afghanistan. He did, he was denied West Point his first time, then he went to Afghanistan, came back. He got a letter from his senator, whose senator is denouncing him now too. You know, a letter of recommendation to West Point. And now the Army's investigating him, and he's resigned from Ranger School. So the kid's obviously got some problems, and he's definitely a douchebag. At number one, honorable mention tonight is Michelle Obama for saying women who didn't vote for Hillary voted against her own voice. 
That's all she gets. That's all she gets is an honorable mention. When Angie comes on in the next half hour, um, after the break, we're going to have artist Angie on, my Twitter wife. Uh, we'll probably touch a little bit on Michelle Obama and women's voices. Lots of fun. So, RB, everybody, stay put. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Angie will be on the line with us. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. And we're back from break. Thanks for staying with us tonight here on FUBAR. See, look how professional I can be when I want to be. Hey, guys, thank you for sitting Mm -hmm. there. Uh, No one asked you over there. (laughs) On the line with us right now, we have the one, the only, the lovely, my Twitter wife, Miss Artist Angie. Artist, are you there? RT. Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) Hey, hey, how are you, honey? (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm sick. I'm just going to like every anybody who listened to my podcast before, you know that I'm like always sick. Somebody can look at me and think the word sick and I get sick, but um, I'm cool. I'm on drugs, though. So we're just going to go ahead and just tell everybody in advance so that they'll know I'm not responsible for anything I might or say or laugh at. I'm not responsible. So I have right drugs too, Angie. So Great. that's fantastic. So I have drugged Angie <laughs> and drugged RB. You people in the chat room really feel sorry. I'm sober. I have had nothing but Gatorade. Maybe I should go have a shot of some bourbon really quick so I can fit in. Woman, 
thank you for coming on tonight since Jake Pentland totally ditched me. By the way, I love Jake. He's so awesome. <laughs> I hope that he comes on again because he's really fun. Uh, I was on his podcast once. It was quite fun. Was he's too. he's enjoyable. He is a hoot. You know, he's like the only liberal I know who doesn't like liberals. And yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He's a lot of fun. I would say that he is he doesn't realize it, but he's a libertarian. That's what I would say. I tried yeah. to convince him he's a left leaning libertarian, that he's not a liberal. But he, you know, it's kind of that, you know, ongoing fight for him. Uh, actually, he did. He had a thing with the show pop up. He had to go learn how to use a camera. He actually felt bad. He sent me photos so I could see he was really stuck in traffic. Nice <laughs> yeah, he's great. Uh, I love so him. We're, we're going to try and get him in. Uh, we do have kind of a full schedule, but we are going to try and get him on because he is just awesome. But you're awesome, too, and you're here even though you're sick. So I adore you. Thank you so much. Hey, you guys well, are talking about that. Thank you for on a short notice. You're helping me break RB in tonight, so that's really helpful, too. Hot. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. He'll be able to talk to me easily. Uh, we, uh, we talk a lot, so that won't be a problem. And, of course, I can talk know, to anybody. So <laughs> You can. That's kind of why I thought, you know what, this will be an easy one for him, and we'll bring him up to speed. He'll be great. But, no, actually, I'm really glad you're here because there's so much stuff to talk about. You guys were talking about that one, the New York Times opinion piece about uh, what they say for all its flaws, communist revolution taught Chinese women to dream big or whatever. I have to tell you guys, the absolute best tweet on that entire thing, making fun of it. If you guys do not follow her, you need to. It's Dawn. It's um, her handle is at Aurora underscore G96. But she did that and she said, for all its flaws, sex slavery gives young people a chance to travel. It is the absolute yes. most hilarious and most spot on tweet making fun of that thing that I saw ever. And it's still going like she has like 4000 RTs on that thing right now it is hilarious. Wow. You guys got to follow her. She's great. This chick, I'm not kidding. I followed her forever. She's so funny. She has like 3000 followers. She deserves like 30,000. I'm not even kidding. You have to follow her. She's lovely. She's wonderful. If you don't go find her, follow her. This she's is, she's hilarious. Well, Love her to death. These people should pay you for these things. <laughs> Y'all should follow Sam because she's awesome. <laughs> <That's really good. laughs> we but, should, yeah, well, you I should do totally, that every Friday. That be like but a side you all are you. awesome. It, you know, well, we can talk about this too because nobody else is going to talk about this but me. It really upsets me on Twitter when people try to act like you are mean. You are not oh. mean. You are like one of the sweetest, kindest, most loyal, oh. wonderful friends I've ever had in my not, entire life. Oh. Not true. I trust mean you one. with my <laughs> life. I would have you like watch my children, which I don't let anybody oh. watch my children. But Indeed. it just really upsets me because all you do is just say what you think. You just don't hide what you think. And then people no. will say like, oh, Angie's so nice or she's so sweet. But I say the same stuff you do. I just might it's not better. say the F word in it or something you like know, that. But I mean, I have been so much better. And please don't tell anybody else I'm nice because we can't have that out. Um, but I've been really good. I haven't been dropping as many F bombs. I've only dropped a couple of them in like, you know, the last couple of days. I've been really good. But no, I appreciate that. You're sweet. And yes, I agree. RB is really the mean one. I'm, I'm not the mean one. Everyone thinks I, I don't know. I have this reputation for being such a hard ass, but I'm really kind of a softy when you get down to it. All right. Yeah, that's, that's right. You, well, yeah, you Angie, are the reason why you get away anyway. with it being the sweet one is because you wrap it all in a hashtag game. <laughs> well, that's true. You guys talked about Plame. I did the Plame hashtag, which actually trended oh. on Twitter for like two seconds, and then they shut it down because like you all the alt right Nazi trolls started taking it over because I did yeah. Plame a song. But people, I did get called mean on that one. You <laughs> that did. hashtag that for starting it. I did get so called damn mean mad. On that one. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true. You got you got accused of anti-Semitism for making fun of an anti-Semite. Yes, That's I did. Twitter. Which kind of amuses me because I know that I'm like too old for him or whatever. But if I could have a backup husband, I would pick Ben Shapiro. And yeah. so I don't think that I'm anti-Semitic. I'm pretty sure that keeps me from being anti-Semitic. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, the Ben Shapiro cougar <laughs> thing keeps you from being anti-Semitic. But she did. She spent like all night trying to prove to everybody that you were an anti-Semite for this hashtag. Yes, yes. That is which that I- is like Twitter wrapped up in a bow right now. That is what is happening on Twitter. There is no more discussion. There, even when we hated each other two or three years ago, there was still people like, you were talking. Now it's just how can I lump you into this label and treat you like crap and move on. 
that's exactly. what she did because that's just what Twitter it's all about well everybody anybody who has been on my Twitter feed like I mean it's obvious I don't know how to I don't like Trump but I don't have Trump derangement syndrome either. Like, I mean, I pretty much will say if he does something decent and I will also say like this idea of his sucks or this, whatever he did sucks. So, but there's not very many people that are like that anymore. It's just like either you, everybody gets mad if you don't love him and everybody gets mad if you don't hate him and you can't really kind of be in the middle, which is where I'm also at on the whole take a knee kind of thing. And, And people are really mad at me because I'm like, you know, they can, they can kneel if they want to. Nobody cares if there's not a rule against it. Who gives a crap? Just let them kneel yep. down and you just like don't pay attention to them. And eventually it would stop. But now it has so much attention, it's not going to stop. But um, then I made a tweet. It's still going. I don't know why. But I said, you know, is it okay for a baker to take a knee now in their shop oh, and one. just wait for the person yeah. to leave? And yeah. I'm having people all kinds of mad at me because I'm just like, well, it's freedom of speech either way. If but you have to pay see, the consequences. That's, that's a big no-no right now. They yeah. don't want you saying people should be, if you want to act like a dumbass, it's your right to still be a dumbass in this country. Believe it or not. Exactly. Be, a, be one. We like it. Because you know what? Then we can avoid you. That's how it's supposed to work. And you can exactly. say whatever you want. And if you protest at work, God bless you, but you're going to get fired. That's also how it works. Exactly. Though, you pay the consequences of your God. freedom of speech, but you have it. If your employer decides that they don't want that representing them, they get to fire you. If you lose business because you don't want to bake the gay wedding cake, then, you know, you lost that business. Personally, I'm a capitalist. I would bake the best daggone glittery gay wedding cake that there ever was because I like money. And I would I like do it money. and I would get more business. But I would not but, force you know, anybody else to do that. I'm the same way. If Even if Antifa came in and said, we want you to bake us a cake, I would charge them twice, but you bet your ass I would bake them a cake. I mean, that's exactly, ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. I'm a capitalist. I don't, I'll make money. I do RB, not would talk you bake about this very often. No, I totally but bake. I, have I, I totally bake. To... I mean, I, I, I believe in the right of free association, but I also I, – I'm a capitalist too. I, I bake the cake and – Unless the government put a gun to my head telling me to bake the cake, then I'm going to resist because, you know. <laughs> yeah, if the government <laughs> wants to make me, screw them, I'm not baking that cake. And I think that's what we were talking about. You know, we, we actually do all chat together. And it was like, well, if the NFL made the rule that they have to stand up, okay, we get that. But if the government does that, screw that noise. We don't want the government exactly. doing that. Well, exactly. that's the difference between, you know, your employer and the when NASCAR came out and said anybody who takes a knee gets fired, NASCAR is the employer of the drivers. So NASCAR has the right to say that. If the government says that, then that's, that is legitimate oppression. So. That is exactly, exactly. what, and they can't see that. It's like, well, if, if you don't stand up for the national anthem, you know, you're a traitor. Or if you stand up, you're a white supremacist. You know, shut up. Let me do what I need to do as an American. If I'm going to stand up if I want to. But the government is, going not, is not going to tell me what to do either way. But one of the the things that really bothers me the most is that, especially with the person who's baking a cake, or take, for instance, I'm an artist. If somebody wants me to draw something that I don't want to draw, you can't force me to do that. I mean, I can can tell you no for any reason I want to. I mean, I have people that come to me and like, all right, I'm going to tell you right now, people that want cars drawn, especially if it's some kind of NASCAR, they're really picky and they're really annoying and I hate dealing with them. Anytime somebody comes to me and they want some stupid NASCAR t-shirt, I'm like, I don't really do the car thing. And I refer them to another guy who does a great job on the car thing. But nobody can say, hey, you're uh, discriminating against rednecks because I don't want to draw the NASCAR for the picky little redneck dude. I mean, well, but see, you can't do that. You're sane. And people who can think, I mean, you, if you really talk to people, they get it. But when you're in the middle of Twitter and it's 140 or 280 characters and you're having oh. a debate, people say dumb stuff. And, you know, I, I like, for example, I'm not going to use any names. I'm trying not to to cause drama. But earlier, like yesterday, um, I took issue with Judge Moore taking out his gun and acting like a dummy. Uh, like he was some idiot with his gun on stage. Look at me. I got a gun. Yee I'm a gun owner. I support the second. Woohoo, bang, bang, you know, like an idiot. Well, it's really bothered me because as a huge proponent of the Second Amendment, I know you don't treat your gun like a toy and don't act like an idiot with it. He's given the left so much fodder with this gun on stage. So I said, this guy's an idiot. 
well, here comes the conservative Second Amendment Brigade to tell me that I'm squeamish on guns, that I'm backpedaling on the Second Amendment. <laughs> and it, it, it really pissed me off. I usually only mute annoying and block crazy, but I blocked all of that because you know what? If after so many years of knowing me in social media, you would accuse me of being squeamish about guns because I think an idiot took out his gun should be told he's an idiot. And you don't know much about anything anyway. <laughs> told you so. <laughs> Shut up. You know, this person went through some horrible things and tried, tried to give this person the benefit of the doubt because I went through a lot of the same things this person did. But that was that was too much. I, You know what? If you're going to question my Second Amendment knowledge or my Second Amendment's respect, then we're done. I don't need this crap in my life. There's enough crap in my life as it is. Look who's on the show with me now. That one actually made me mad enough to get involved. And everybody knows, like anybody who follows me, I'm very conflict averse. Like I yes, try to avoid conflict at all costs, even in my real life. I'm just not but, a conflict kind of person. Not, you will hide the body, though. That's the thing you leave out. I don't like to fight, but if Sam gets in a fight, I'll hide the body. That's who you are. <laughs> oh, forget yes, that. That is. That, that is. But I'm also like, I'm not afraid to say what I need to say. Like, if I'm going to talk about somebody, I will say it directly to their face. Like, if I have something that you have done that annoys me, and anybody who is my friend knows this, I will just come to your face and I will say it. But yes, I do not, like, I purposely try to avoid conflict most of the time, especially if it's not involving me. So, But those people were so annoying that even I jumped in and said, hey, that's not even, tr what you are saying is not true. That did not happen. And so for me, you know, it has to be pretty bad for me to step in and say something. But Well, they were trying to, they were telling people that Margaret Cho had tried to sue me or something. I don't know. Margaret Cho and I, you know, had a falling out a couple years back. It got pretty nasty. Um, and <laughs> but she and I actually ended up being friends. And she's also said she'll come on my show even. So we are good friends. We follow each other. We touch base probably once or twice a year. I ask her how tour is. She tells, says, tells me a dirty joke. It's the end of it. But um, they were trying to tell people that she had sued me or I had sued her. I don't know what yes. happened. So they were trying to say that involved. her lawyers got involved and you ran off scared because her lawyers got involved. I'm like... I was there. That did not happen. They're even friends now. Yeah, her lawyers got involved because I, I was telling her that um, she needed to, I can't remember what our argument was about, pro-life and I can't, gay marriage. And I agree with her on gay marriage. It was just bizarre. But we ended up being friends. And yeah, people are stupid. And back to Twitter. There we go. We made a full circle. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I like in the, in the chat, Persnickety just said, Angie is sane, drugged, and now a body hatter. I'm learning a lot about her tonight. <laughs> and all of that's true. I like I it. Try not to look. I look at the that's I my resume. Totally I'm going to change my bio to that. I'm going to just leave the typo often part, and then it's going to be sane, drugged, and body hatter. That's what I'm going to put in my Twitter bio for tomorrow. I and like the, the 100,000.76 most conservative <laughs> voice on Twitter or whatever. <laughs> hey, I'm the 7th most conservative voice out there. Thank you very much. It's all scientific. <laughs> Everything is scientific. Angie, I got to bring this one up because you're another chick. Did you see what Michelle Obama said about women who didn't vote for Hillary? Yeah, I, j I skimmed past it a little bit. But basically, is she she's just trying to say that we are hurting ourselves. She's going with the internalized misogyny thing, correct? Like, basically, right, she's she trying to tell us that we're hurting our own voice. Yes, or something we're, along that we're line. silencing ourselves because we didn't vote for her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't vote for either one of them. So I. I don't know what she's talking about. But so wait, 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 uh, wait. Were you trying to silence yourself but not trying to silence yourself because you didn't vote for either of them? It's kind of like that whole, well, if you don't vote for Trump, you voted for Hillary thing. Is that kind of how that works? Because I'm totally confused. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know how that whole thing works. You know, as far as all yeah. that goes, if I didn't vote for either one of them, I guess somehow I'm internalizing and also being I'm internalizing my misogyny, but also being a bigot. I'm sure it's some, in, you know, somewhere in between. I'm I'm a bigot Islamophobe too, or something. Hey, RB, yes. are you yeah, internalizing your Are you internalizing your misogyny? No, I'm exporting it. Are you exporting? Your misogyny? You are the patriarchy. <laughs> I am the patriarchy. 
do you feel like since you didn't vote for Hillary that you were voting against yourself? I think that if I had voted for Hillary, I, you could keep my balls in a purse. Well, I, you know. I'm, I'm sorry. I, no, I, here's, I, here's the thing. You know, the, the, the whole voting by okay. gender or by identity politics in general, it's just a massive eye roll for me. And I, 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 I can't care less about it. I really can't. <laughs> I, the even though the, the Obamas are gone, Hillary's gone, I'm tired of them all. And even though they keep but, injecting themselves into our conversation, just go away. But you're an evil white dude. And so, I like, am evil white. Now, did you so just no assume one, my race and gender? I did. Because no one really cares about your voice or your vote anymore. Didn't you get that message? It's all about, you know, the, the women. No, nobody voice. cared about the giant walking tank vote in the first place. They just you like know? to knock down buildings. It's the donkey yeah. thing. You know it's the donkey thing. They mm, it is the donkey donkeys. thing. It, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm a cast out of society on a donkey farm. You are. But, now, I but hey, you know what? There's that... 45 days. There's 45 <clears throat> shopping days until Die Hard is a Christmas movie season. So yay, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It is. I love Bruce I agree. Willis too. <laughs> Yes, we know you love Bruce Willis. <laughs> I do. I really do love him. But um, let me say this, too. When we're talking about people putting other people in categories, especially by voters, it really bothers me when people try to say, like, OK, there are different kinds of Trump voters and there are different kinds of people who did not vote for Trump. And there are different kinds of people who voted for Hillary. But it really bothers me when everybody puts, like, especially last resort Trump voters into this big, like, as if they're the Trump cultists, and they're not. I totally 100% understand the people who voted for Trump as a last resort because he's running against she Satan. You know, I get that. Yeah. And it really upsets me She's when people dumb. try to put those people down as if they are, you know, the cult leaders or something. They're not. They're not. In the same no, way, they're when, the, when people, the cult is that 30% that no matter what he does, he still has that 30, 35% base. He's like, oh, we love him. That's the cult. Exactly. Yeah. And it really bothers That's me Obama when they 2. do out. that. They are. Yeah. And then I get really upset too when people try to call the say, never hey, Trump people. Cool. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you, there? you. No, you're good. I'm, I'm breaking up. I blame Rick. <laughs> okay. We can blame Rick because he's <laughs> not on. All right, I'll blame Rick for that. But I, it really upset me too when they say that like all never Trump people – we're we're establishment or that we're like everybody is never trump is like bill crystal and that's not the case some of us just hated both of them like we just did not like either of our choices and it's and for that fact i didn't like gary johnson either i think that the libertarian party totally blew a chance when they could have gotten yeah, somebody on the map because they ran gary johnson he sucked he, he did totally suck. sucked but he was the nicest person, according to my 11-year-old daughter, and I think he was the least likely to abuse executive authority, so I voted for him. Yep. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> and, and you know what? Like, everybody thinks that Never Trump people that we all liked, uh, Mick, what Muffin. was his face? Mick Mellon, whatever his name was. Mc I don't know his name Mc was. Mellon? I don't know. Mick Muffin, Mc something. I don't know. I couldn't stand <laughs> that dude. <laughs> Can like, I hated that dude. Really I really got stand a big bald head. <laughs> I don't even know what his name was. Like, I hated him so bad, I didn't even, like, retain his name. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I'm sorry. You guys talk. I got him. Melon? I actually what? forgot he existed, and I think I oh, actually wrote him funny. in. It was either him or Castle. I, no, I couldn't do Castle, so I think I was forced to write him in just because Gary Johnson was just so boring. Uh, and, and, I'm and, and I regret it. I really do. I mean, I, I sit here every time he tweets, and especially if he, him and, like, Louise Mensch are in a thread together, I just want to blow my brains out. Yeah, Louise is special. Yeah, she's very special. And, you know, Sorry. what in the world is wrong with Twitter giving Louise Mitch 280 characters? What are they thinking? They're trying to kill all of us. They're going to give Trump and Mitch and, like, all these people that I absolutely hate, they're giving them 200. They need double the characters? Really? I don't they think so. Those I don't think they do. You know what I think really bothers me the most about Trump now? I, it, it, it's bugged me for a while, and I think I can finally verbalize it, is that for somebody who is so involved on Twitter. He doesn't know how to chain his tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lose sleep over that every night. I, I, I really do, too. Do. I, it's, 
It, yeah, it, I can't. Uh, the leader of the free world cannot change his tweets. <sighs> it's a, a horrible <laughs> thing. Auntie, that's Auntie. the best thing anybody. That's the best thing anybody ever said about Trump. I love it. <laughs> I like my, I'm sorry. The McMillan thing was my was my favorite. Girl, I gotta I gotta let you go already. Wow, it's already time to like end the show. I, I know this sucks. I really enjoyed having you on. Yeah, it was fun. And I didn't you should sneeze come back. or cough or like throw up or anything. No, I'm going to laugh awesome. like an idiot. You, you were sober, like, good. I lost my marbles there for a minute. That was funny. Yeah, I got to go. <laughs> How do people find you right now? How do they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at artist underscore Angie, even though Rick has my name incorrect in the title up there. Not anymore. <laughs> the Man, I fixed it while we were on break. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all can find me there. And you can't find me anywhere else because I don't do anything else. No, you don't. That's, That's it. All right. Well, thank you, my sweet, wonderful <laughs> friend, my best friend, my wife, for coming on. I appreciate you so much. Good night, Angie. Thanks death. for showing up. <laughs> okay. Catch you later. Go get some sleep. RB, we're already done. See, you you made it through just fine. You did great. Yeah. You know, a little Sailor Jerry's and coffee. I'm doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. Um, you guys, thank you for being here tonight. RB was great. If you see him and he's free in an hour or so, give him a thumbs up. Appreciate him being here. Please stay put because there's a great lineup tonight on Kaylor and Radio. Next is the conservative curmudgeon. He is off tonight, but there is a repeat because it's his birthday. Wish him a happy birthday if you see him. After that is Jesse's voice, followed by the Stafford voice, and then America off the rails with my producer, the fabulous Rick Robinson. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay out of trouble. RB, thanks for being here. Hail Hydra. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>